Good afternoon, dear representatives of media and others following. Welcome to this press conference by the Finnish government. The topic of this press conference is the government's report on changes in the Finnish security environment following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The report was adopted today at the government session and will be submitted to the parliament. The report does not include any conclusions or present new security policy guidelines. In today's event, we have Minister for Foreign Affairs Pekka Haavisto, Minister of Defence Antti Kaikkonen and Minister of the Interior Krista Mikkonen to tell us about the report and the process that follows. We have time roughly until uh, 15 past four Finnish time, although uh, especially Minister of Defence Antti Kaikkonen has some restrictions and has to leave latest at four o'clock Finnish time. This event will be streamed live on the government's YouTube channel and can be found there afterwards as well. The, the report has uh, been published on the Ministry for Foreign Affairs homepage. After the minister's speeches, there will be time for some questions through the Zoom connection or from this room. As we have a large number of journalists present, we might not have time for all the questions, but we will do our best. But first we will hear the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Pekka Haavisto, Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. The government really has just adopted a government report on changes in the security environment, a white paper. The report has now also been published. The report assesses the changes in the foreign and security policy environment caused by the aggression started by Russia against Ukraine and its effects on Finland. The report does not include any conclusions or present policy proposals on foreign and security policy. The report supplements earlier reports issued by the government, such as the foreign and security policy report and the defense report. Approximately half of the report deals with foreign security and defense policy, and the rest examines the impact on the economy, security of supply, preparedness, the effects on the functions of society, society's resilience, hybrid influence activities, cyber security, civil defense, and critical infrastructures. The Ministry for Foreign Affairs was responsible for the coordination of the report. The Working Group on Foreign and Security Policy and Coordination Group prepared the report. The Foreign Security and Defense Policy section was discussed in meetings with the President of the Republic and the Ministerial Committee on Foreign and Security Policy. In addition, the Ministerial Working Group on Preparedness the Ministerial Working Group on International, Internal Security and Strengthening the Rule of Law, and the Ministerial Working Group on the Digital Transformation, the Data Economy and Public Administration prepared other areas of the report. The report was prepared within an exceptionally tight time frame. Our security environment is also very exceptional at the moment. The war of aggression started by Russia against Ukraine will affect the security of Europe and Finland both in the short and long term. We have described the impact in the report. The war started by Russia jeopardizes the security and stability of the whole of Europe. Russia's act of aggression is a blatant violation of international law, the Charter of the United Nations and the principles of the OECE. Through its actions, Russia has breached the European rules-based security order and has shown that it does not respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of its neighbours. Indeed, it's ready to engage in a large-scale war to advance its political objectives and to ensure its military sphere of influence. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has long-term effects on our security environment. The security situation in Europe and in Finland is now more serious and more difficult to predict than at any time since the Cold War. Moreover, the changes in the security situation is expected to be long-lasting. In international relations, trust in Russia has, co has collapsed. International organizations have responded strongly on Russia's aggression, and regional and multilateral cooperation with Russia has been reduced. The international community aims to hold Russia and its representatives accountable for the consequences and effects of the illegal war of aggression. War crimes must be investigated and those responsible must be brought to justice. The report describes the strong and united response by the West and the international community to Russia's aggression. 
The strong message of the international community and the unity of the EU and NATO have been of key importance. At the UN General Assembly of the United Nations, a resolution condemning Russia's aggression was supported by 141 member states. Swift decisions were made by the EU, such as economic sanctions, closing the airspace to Russian and Belarusian aircraft, and arms assistance to Ukraine. Such unity and responsiveness are important for Finland's security too. Russia's aggression has shown the confines of a policy of interdependence based on economic and other cooperation. However, it's Finland's interest to maintain functioning relations with Russia also in the future. Many European countries have reassessed or are in the process of reassessing their foreign and security policies. Sweden, for instance, is currently conducting a similar assessment process on the changes in the security environment. In preparing our report, we were in close cooperation with Sweden. Finland is very well equipped to defend its own security. Ever since Finland joined the European Union in 1995, our security policy has been based on being militarily non-aligned. Nevertheless, the changed security environment calls for reassessment of the, this security policy. With this in mind, the report assesses Finland's foreign security and defence policy cooperation with various actors and the possibilities for closer cooperation. The report examines actions to develop our national defence capability, the European Union as a security policy actor and closer bilateral cooperation with Sweden, Norway and other Nordic countries. It also discusses our relationship with the United States, the United Kingdom, NATO and our multilateral defence cooperation partners. The report describes the opportunities these forms of cooperation and partnerships provide Finland in the current security situation. The role of the EU as an actor in foreign security and defence policy has strengthened. Moreover, the EU's response to the invasion of Ukraine has been united. The EU's unity and strength increases our security. Sweden is Finland's closest bilateral partner. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has further uh, accentuated cooperation between Finland and Sweden and made it more intensified. Finland will continue to forge deeper foreign and security policy cooperation and defence cooperation with Sweden without predetermined restrictions. We will also develop trilateral cooperation between Finland, Sweden and the United States. In my view, it's important that Finland and Sweden should seek to make decisions in the same direction. However, Finland and Sweden make their foreign and security policy decisions independently. We will seek to further deepen cooperation with the United States. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has further strengthened the United States' commitment to NATO and security in Europe. Finland and the United States have introduced further measures to deepen their bilateral defence cooperation. Intensive cooperation with other key partners, such as the United Kingdom, France, Germany and the Nordic countries, will continue. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Finland, together with Sweden, has further deepened cooperation with NATO. Finland considers it essential that NATO has consistently reaffirmed its open-door policy. The Russian aggression has further strengthened NATO's role as a defence alliance. NATO is currently reviewing the strengthening of the collective defence. The report also assesses the effects on Finland if Finland were to seek NATO membership and de describes the possible accession process. Finland's security and defence policy is built on safeguarding the nation's room for manoeuvre and on keeping different options open. We retain the option of joining a military alliance and applying for NATO membership. Decisions are always considered in real time. This is the work we are currently doing. Finland is well prepared for various security threats. As a Nordic country, we have stable and reliable structures in society. Finland is a country that provides security and strongly advocates international rules-based cooperation. In response to the changed security situation, Finland will continue active and proactive diplomacy and intensify cooperation with key partners. And then finally, something about the next steps in this process. Today the government submitted the report to Parliament for consideration. 
The purpose of the report is to provide Parliament with assessments for a thorough and extensive foreign and security policy debate in the changed security environment. Parliament is expected to hold a referral debate on the report, after which the report will be discussed extensively in various committees. Parliament is expected to respond to the report by issuing a parliamentary communication. Then the issue would be referred back to the government and the President of the Republic for consideration. The next step in a possible accession process would be to produce another report of or communication for Parliament. However, we should not get ahead of things, and it's best to let Parliament discuss this report in peace. And actually, as an appendix to the report, there are two slides. The first is the NATO process, uh, which is uh, referring how NATO is accepting new member states. And the second slide is about the Finnish own decision making to clarify the things, how the process will go here in Finland. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Haavisto. And next we will hear Minister of Defence, Antti Kaikkonen. Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. The security situation in Europe and in Finland is more serious and more difficult to predict, predict than it has been for decades. Increased tensions also undermine the security situation and its predictability in the Baltic Sea region. The military situation in Finland's neighboring areas is currently calm. Finland is not facing an immediate military threat. But we must look to the future as well. Finland must be prepared for the use or the threat of use of military force against it, as well as for political pressure. The military actions against Ukraine show that the high level of readiness and the ability to counter sustained military pressure are needed. It is important to be ready and able to repel large-scale offensive operations on several simultaneous fronts. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has proved that the basis on which we have developed our defense, it is right. In this situation, we will further strengthen our defense capabilities in an accelerated manner. The aim is to safeguard our defense capability under all circumstances. Just last week, the government of Finland has decided to make major additional investments for the defense forces. For the coming four years, government decided to increase the defense budget by a total of approximately 2.2 billion euros. For this year, we will further raise the defense budget by approximately 700 million euros. We take our defense seriously. We will defend our territory, citizens and society with all available resources. It is crystal clear for us that we need a strong national defense capabilities in all situations and in all security policy solutions. Then a few words about our defense cooperation. In recent years, Finland's defense cooperation has been actively and systematically developed by building a bilateral and multi multilateral defense cooperation network. This strengthens Finland's defense capability in a number of ways. In the current security situation, the importance of defense cooperation has been further emphasized. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Finland and Sweden have deepened their bilateral cooperation and enhanced their contacts with NATO to improve their shared situational awareness. Defense cooperation increases the likelihood of receiving assistance in a crisis situation. It also raises the threshold for military action against Finland. At the same time, the current defense cooperation structures or arrangements in which Finland is involved are not a security solution similar to collective defense. They do not include security guarantees or obligations. This is one of the key conclusions in the new report. The report also deals with our cooperation with NATO and the Alliance's development. NATO has been strengthening its deterrence and defense during the past years. 
new decisions are expected in Madrid. The report also touches the impacts of a possible Finnish membership in NATO. However, it does not make recommendations on whether to apply for membership or not. We hope the report will give a good basis for a fruitful discussion in the Parliament. Thank you. Thank you, Minister of Defence Antti Kaikkonen. And next we will hear Minister of the Interior Krista Mikkonen, please. Thank you and good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, along with the foreign and defence policy, the government report gives broader ideas to the effects of the change in the security environment in Finland. The changes are reflected in many different dimensions of internal security. Effective overall security is a key part of preparedness. The change security environment requires continuous threat assessment and improved overall co coordination. We need better identification and response to hybrid influence activities. These activities consist of a combination of different means and usually many different actions are used at the same time. Finland has adopted extensive measures to prepare for possibly hybrid influence activities. Information influence and disinformation are examples of hybrid influence activities. It's becoming more difficult to assess the reliability of information shared on social media and in other online environments. Every one of us has a role to play in the fight against information influence activities. Open, multilingual and active communication by the authorities plays a key role in combating information influence activities. Its role is even more important during crisis. <coughs> in hybrid actions, one goal is to create tens tensions and hatred between different social groups. We must build trust in society and a sense of security. The change in the security policy environment is also reflect reflected in the cyber environment. Cyber attacks have increased in recent years, and these attacks have been directed at national authorities and municipal actors, as well as the business community. We are prepared for higher threats of cyber attacks. The National Cyber Security Center, the police, intelligence agencies, and the defense forces work in close cooperation with each other to ensure national cyber security. Also, companies play an essential role in safeguarding the cyber environment. It's important to make coordination between different actors tighter both nationally and internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, Finland controls the longest border between EU and Russia. Border security measures prevent unauthorized border crossings and safeguard public order and security. We have taken several steps in securing border security. This includes critical material procurement, cyber expertise, and the modernization of technical surveillance. We have decided to raise budget for border guards significantly to strengthen border security. We are also prepared for large-scale migration management and for the possible instrument instrumentalization of migration as a form of hybrid influence activity. Several legislative changes are being prepared both at the national and EU level. The government report also highlights how the war will affect Finland in an economic sense. Rising energy prices, changes in raw material markets, the stagnation of trade in Russia, and changes in logistic roads are examples of many effects. A huge number of people have fled from the war zone in, U in Ukraine seeking protection. It's still difficult to predict the number of war refugees coming to Finland or the duration of the necessary protection. It's important that refugees can quickly feel to be part of our society. Almost a half of refugees are children. 
and we need to have special attention for the children's rights. The war also may lead to the illicit trafficking of weapons, the criminal use and spread of organized crime. In the early stages of the crisis, the most acute concern is the risk of vulnerable women and children being exposed to human trafficking and other exploitation as a consequence of large-scale migration. The cooperation between national and international authorities has been strengthened to tackle these risks. Finally, I would like to emphasize psychological resilience to the crisis. It's clear that after the coronavirus pandemic, this new crisis will again affect people's well-being and sense of security. A secure daily life is a key factor in well-being, especially for children and young people. We must communicate in a manner that builds confidence between people and the authorities. The media also have a significant role to play in communicating reliable information and supporting people's crisis resilience. Even if the war makes people to feel unsafe and worried, it also raises a will to defect and strengthen the values of democracy. It's important that citizens have opportunities to discuss how this war affects their lives. We need also offer people opportunities and means how to strengthen peace and democracy in their local communities, nationally and internationally. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Mikkonen, ministers. And now it's time for Q&A. So both here in the room and, and online, if you have a question, please raise your hand and I will give you your turn at some point. And at the beginning, just in case, please introduce yourself and whom you re represent. And if possible, let us know to whom you address your question to. So first question uh, from Lili Bayer, Politico Europe. Uh, go ahead. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question for Foreign Minister Havisto. Um, in the report, the government wrote that the timing of possible accession and the speed of accession process are of particular importance in the current situation. Um, I know that the, the, I understand the decision hasn't been made yet, but I was wondering if you could perhaps outline once a decision, if a decision is made to join NATO, uh, whether you will be pushing for some sort of expedited timeline and what that could look like. Thank you. Well, thank you for the question. And really, now when this uh, white paper will be given to Parliament, it's up to the Parliament how, how much time it will take to, to process it. And also, hear all those experts that are, are needed. Uh, of course, the uh, Parliament has the possibility, and the subcommittees have possibility to listen also experts in the safe space, so to say that they, they, they could have more confidential information that information that is not published here openly and so forth. So we, of course, then when Parliament has been processing this, we are waiting their communication to the, to the government and that would then trigger the, the next uh, uh, white paper from the government side, if so needed, regarding the NATO uh, membership. And of course, the, the NATO has its own processes. The NAC is meeting either on ambassador level or, or, or ministerial level and, and, and that would then trigger the process, of course, from the NATO side. We are full aware that uh, uh, then when, when this process goes on, uh, all 30 current NATO member states have to process the application in their own decision-making bodies, uh, very often in the parliaments, and then we speak about the time period that can be several months, even up to one year. And uh, during that period, of course, you are not directly covered with the NATO Article 5 and so forth. So uh, it's very important that uh, uh, if you go to that way, also the NATO member states understand that uh, the uh, rapid process is very important also regarding the security issues. Thank you. Next question is from Eirini Zarkadola, Athens New Agency. Uh, please go ahead. So, 
Hello, this is Irene Zarkadula with Greek Public TV and Athens News Agency. Thank you for the floor. I would like to ask you, since um, Finland is ready to um, uh, join NATO, is ready to um, respond to any to the threats of Putin, and in case Putin, for, exa for example, um, let's say go, goes forward with uh, hybrid at attacks, which is something common um, during our days. So is ready for that kind of threat, threats and that kind of danger. Thank you. Thank you. As, as Minister Mikkonen stated in this report, actually the other part is about uh, uh, new types of threats, hybrid cyber threats and, and uh, the, uh, all, all other aspects of life that this crisis is influencing the, the energy security, food security, and, and so forth. And of course, we uh, fully understand that in, in these times, particularly the cyber attacks, hybrid attacks are also used to disturb the lives of nations. And we have seen this particularly, of course, in Ukraine. Some Russian aggression against Ukraine has been, has been like that. And I, I think we have to be ready for those kind of threats. As you well know, in, in, in Helsinki, we have the so-called hybrid center, which cooperates very closely with the uh, NATO and EU countries. And, and, and that's also one part of our preparedness that we have institution that has been dealing already for, for several years, has been dealing with this type of threats. Thank you. Next question comes from Fredrik Björkman from Dagens Industri. Was so good. Thank you much. Uh, thank you very much for the floor. I have a two part question. Uh, the first one is regarding timing. Uh, when would be the optimal time to join for Finland and why? And also the fact that Sweden is behind Finland in the security process and analysis. How does that affect Finland's situation? Does that in any way hinder Finland from joining NATO? Well, if I try to answer. My colleagues might have a, another aspect on, on this issue, but, but about the right timing, I, I will answer in that way that there is a question, what has changed? Why Finland feels that uh, this is the time to debate about the security issues? Why this is the time to, to take from the shell the, the so-called NATO option and, and, and looking if this is the moment to, to use it? I, I would list actually three issues from our debate what has changed. First, Russia is ready to take higher risks than, than earlier. We see in this uh, attack against the Ukraine that this is a very high risk operation for, for Russia, but, but still it has been done. Secondly, Russia is uh, capable of, of uh, concentrating more than 100,000 soldiers in one spot against one country. A country actually even without uh, the mobilization of the reserves and, and so forth. This is a, a scary scenario, of course, uh, what we have been witnessing on the border of, of uh, Ukraine. And then uh, thirdly, we have uh, noticed more and more this kind of, I would say, quite loose argumentation about uh, unconventional weapons, including tactical nuclear weapons and chemical weapons and so forth. And of course, people are concerned also in Finland that what if we see a conflict where this type of uh, weapons are used what will be our response, how do we protect our people, and, and so forth. I think these are the issues that have changed. Then regarding the timetable with Sweden, I, I'm in a really close contact with uh, my colleague, uh, Foreign Minister Ann Linde, and we have been talking regularly, sometimes several times per week, and, and just Monday we had a, also, uh, we have had our, our meetings, or, or last week we have had our meetings and, and discussed these, these issues, and of course both countries are uh, in a similar situation, in one way we are discussing about the possible NATO membership. Both of our countries have anyhow a little bit different processes. Uh, Sweden has this uh, parliamentary committee or committee of the parties in the parliament and I participated to their first meeting uh, telling about the Finnish process. So I, I think we have, uh, we have been trying to synchronize in the way that at least both sides have the all information, what is the timeline, and, and so forth. But at the same time, both countries are making their own decision. We, we, we cannot influence or we cannot make decisions on the behalf of the other country. The optimal situation, of course, from the Finnish perspective, is that uh, Sweden could join or apply the membership uh, of NATO at the same time as, as Finland is doing. But of course, 
there is also a possibility that we come to the different conclusions, but, uh, but we have so close ties with Sweden that, that I think among Finnish population it, has a, it would have a very positive response if we could do these things together, and I, I assume that the debate in Sweden is similar. Minister Kaikkonen, please. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Uh, I am in contact with my Swedish counterpart, Mr. Peter Hutvist. Well, maybe not daily, but at least weekly. We've met almost 60 times during my ministerial period in, in three years. So that tells something about the deepness of our good cooperation. And Mr. Havisto and, uh, has a lot of contacts also. And the prime minister is today in Sweden. So these are just some, some examples of our very deep cooperation. Uh, I'd say we promised to each other that we won't surprise each other, so, uh, so we will inform about the situation in both countries all the, all the time. And uh, I know Sweden is following our discussion very actively, and we do the same. We are also interested in the Swedish discussion concerning, concerning this, 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 this issue. So no surprises. Uh, Sweden does its decisions itself, and we do our decisions. But I also, as a Minister of Defence, see advantages if we do the same conclusion here. It would be better, but, but still, it's uh, both, both do their own, own decisions. Uh, I'd say that um, we pass this report now to the Parliament, and uh, it takes what it takes, how much time does it take in, in the Parliament, but uh, I'd say that we are not going to wait for the Midsummer Festival in, in June. We do the conclusions before before that, and uh, well, Sweden makes its own own schedule. I don't see that the decisions should should be made exactly the same same day, the same date. It's not necessary, but uh, if Sweden could do the decisions and conclusions also also before holidays, I I I'd see that that would be. That would be useful and uh, and good, but still, it's it's Sweden's Sveriges sak in Sweden. Thank you. The next question comes from uh, Henry Foy, Financial Times. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, Defence Minister Kaikkonen, both you this afternoon and the White Paper have made clear that there are no formal NATO security guarantees currently in place with Finland, including from the US. Uh, but NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said last week that NATO allies would, quote, find ways to address these security concerns. Um, can you talk about what discussions you've had and, and how might those uh, uh, NATO allies find those ways to address your concerns? Thank you. Unfortunately, not, not much, not much. Uh, of course, we've been debating the, the possible process with uh, Many, many NATO, NATO countries and NATO as organi organizations, organization, but uh, but uh, there's not much that I could I could open from of, of those, those discussions. Maybe I could ask ask the Minister of Foreign Affairs, could you be more open <laughs> than me? Uh, we have we have of course a full transparency in the Foreign Ministry on <laughs> all, all issues, but uh, but seriously, uh, we, we, we don't in the Ministry of Defence. <laughs> Seriously speaking, first of all, uh, in, in our contacts, my contacts with uh, several NATO countries and, and my colleagues, foreign ministers, it's very clear that the NATO open door policy that is in the statutes of, uh, of uh, NATO is a very important principle for, for NATO as an organization and NATO member states. And NATO member states wouldn't like to come to the situation that this open door policy does not exist, that somebody prevents countries of applying NATO membership, that there are threats uh, against countries that are applying, and I think this is very clear. Secondly, of course, it's very clear that uh, uh, the NATO Article 5 security guarantees come only, will come only through the membership. Uh, but there is, of course, uh, everybody understands that it will take some time, some people say four to 12 months, that all the 30 countries have, have then made their decision of the possible new uh, NATO candidate, and there comes this kind of period where it's very important that uh, uh, countries, uh, NATO countries also understand the, the risk of that period and, and, and do what they can uh, when in those circumstances. I have been also referring to the 
Article 42.7 and actually the increased EU cooperation on security in, in, uh, regarding Ukraine, we have seen a huge mobilization of uh, humanitarian aid, but also military equipment and, and equipment and, and military uh, aid to uh, Ukraine. Ukraine is not a, a EU country, but still EU has been very capable to mobilize very effectively help. And I think this also strengthens the Finnish position and the position of any EU country that would be attacked, that the EU has a very strong solidarity, which is not only words, but really also real action. Thank you. Next question from Ricard Josviak, Radio Free Europe. Please go ahead. Yes, it's a question for the uh, Defence Minister, if I may, uh, to say what, what benefits would NATO get from actually having Finland on board as a NATO member? Thank you. I'd say that uh, Finland could contribute safety and security, and uh, we could bring some added value to NATO as well. We have a relatively strong defence in Finland. We've invested in our defence for decades, also after the Cold War, when it was, was the time that quite a number of European countries make major cuts to their terror defence. We didn't. Uh, we have, a, I'd say, our defence forces are in good shape. We have a stable foreign and security policy. Uh, I think this could be useful uh, values also from the point of view of, of NATO. I'd say we have a full interoperability also with NATO and uh, Finland and Sweden are both very close pa partners to, to NATO. So uh, I believe that uh, we wouldn't cause more problems to NATO, vice versa. Thank you. Next question, Berit Nuka Postimees. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, there were already yesterday certain reports in the media that uh, Russia has been moving uh, military equipment nearer to uh, Finnish border, and one probably could expect this kind of a provocations during the period there is a NATO debat debate going on in Finland, but especially during the period uh, where you apply, for example, to become a member of NATO but ain't a member yet. Uh, how well is uh, Finland prepared for those kind of provocations and uh, how far Russia could go, in your opinion, in those things? Well, uh, those weapon systems which were in media yesterday uh, have probably been in the region for a longer period al already, and we don't know the exact date of what, what was it, when was it taped. So um, I'd say it, it was, was not, not so big, big news. Big news. Um, in a, in a longer run, most probably, well, Russia has already said that it will react somehow to possible membership of NATO, uh, of Finland. I'd say that uh, most probably Russia would uh, invest more on its military capabilities in this part of Europe, perhaps close to Finnish borders. And, uh, well, we don't know, but uh, I'd say that would be one reaction of, of Russia, what we would see. Thank you. We have, for the moment, one more hand raised up. So I, if you have a question, do you raise your hand? Okay, now we have two. Next question, Daniel Ingmu Expressen. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, after listening to Sanna Marin and Magdalena Andersson today, you get the impression that Finland is further ahead than Sweden in the process of joining NATO. Could you tell us why that is? Why is Finland ahead? I, I, I think uh, the very dramatic events of the 24th of February, Russian attack against Ukraine, uh, led us Finns to think what if this kind of attack would happen in our region? It's actually quite similar that in the last autumn when we saw the uh, uh, mobilization of migrants from Belarus to Poland. We were full in solidarity with Poland and Latvia and Lithuania, but, but the Finns were asking what if this is happening on our border? And I think this just reflects that fin the Finns are quite security oriented people. Of course, we have memories from the history uh, we have been, as, as Foreign Minister, as Minister of Defence Kaikkonen told, uh, we have been prepared for 
for keeping uh, worst case scenarios, for keeping our military and, and so forth. And in these circumstances, I, I think it was very clear that this debate uh, among the public also triggered a lot of political debate among the parliamentarians, among the political parties. And at the same time, we knew that we need a democratic process of decision making. You cannot just base your decision on, on opinion polls or something like that. You need a political party's position and you need a parliament process. And, and that's why we started this uh, white paper. We can see that also Sweden is uh, going ahead. The, the committee of the, of the political parties uh, is, is doing its work and, and so forth. And of course, we try to share uh, as much of our information and, and viewpoints as possible between Finland and Sweden. But we respect the, the, the Swedish timetable. Sweden will make its own decision and Finland its own decision. Thank you. And at this point, uh, Minister Kaikkonen has to leave. Thank you, Minister. But Thank we can you. go on for some more minutes. Next question. Lili Vedha, ATA Helsinki. Please go ahead. We cannot hear you. We can try again after the next question. Next question comes from uh, Jennifer Hansler, CNN. Now I can, you can hear me, I think. Oh, okay, okay. We go back to Lili Verdha, ATA okay. Helsinki. Just a second. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lili Verda, Ata Helsinki. Uh, in fact, I am the Albanian media in Finland, in Nordic countries. Uh, to Minister Havisto, uh, I would like just to ask, uh, there are 30 ma uh, countries uh, in NATO, and Albania has been always pro for, uh, for uh, Finland to join NATO, NATO. But what about uh, Hungary? Did you manage to get a positive support from Hungary. Thank you. Well, thank you. And as a foreign minister, of course, I have been meeting several uh, NATO countries. I have been talking to the Turkish minister, Savu Soglu. I have been uh, talking to Hungarian foreign minister, uh, Peter Svarto, and, and uh, I have been talking to Western Balkans, Montenegro, uh, North Macedonia, Albania, and, and, and so forth. And, and it's, of course, very natural that countries that are more distant from us do not follow the, the security situation maybe so closely and, and so forth. So it's always important to inform why, why this debate has been triggered in Finland, what is our aim, how do we see the future steps and so forth. And in all these meetings, I have got a lot of uh, positive feedback. I have uh, got a lot of understanding to the Finnish position and so forth. And, and uh, I think all these NATO countries share the shock that has happened after a uh, Russian invasion against Ukraine, and, and we have very similar viewpoints. So it's, uh, I, 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 I cannot name any country who, who says to, to us that not now or not at all or, or uh, anything like that. Of course, countries, uh, and when I'm talking to the government representatives, they say that, of course, they also have always the parliamentary reservation in, in that sense that when parliament starts to discuss these issues it might take a little bit more time and, and you have to argue to the parliamentarians but that's normal democratic process that you you are involved and of course from the Finnish side we are always ready to to produce more material and, and explain our viewpoints also to, to, to anyone then if we are at that decision making stage later. Thank you. Next question Jennifer Hansler, CNN. Thank you. I wanted to follow up on an earlier question and ask whether you've made any specific requests to the U.S. or any NATO allies about potential security guarantees or, or help in an interim period between application and accession into NATO. And as conversations are going on at NATO about hardening the eastern flank, would uh, Finland be open to housing uh, NATO forces on a more permanent basis if you were to become a member? Thank you. Thank you for these two questions. And first, regarding the cooperation with the US, uh, our President Niinistö has had a very good discussion with uh, President Biden in, in Washington. Uh, Minister Kaikkonen, as Minister of Defense, has been visiting US and having bilateral uh, discussion with his counterpart. And I have met twice uh, Foreign Minister, Foreign Secretary Blinken and, and explaining the Finnish situation and our position and so forth. And of course, we already have uh, 
uh, agreements with the U.S. Uh, bilateral military agreements, and, and, and particularly related to material. And as, as you know, we last uh, autumn made a very, I would say, historic F-35 decision here in Finland. So we are taking care of also our defense material and, and so forth. And, and uh, I, I wouldn't go more deep on any, any of the details on these discussions, but the cooperation with the U.S. has been very close also on these issues, and we have been fully informing U.S. on, on our steps and our, our plans, and they know about this uh, coming white paper and, and uh, the debate that is, is following in, in Finland. But uh, let us first weigh these issues. Then uh, your next question was about the permanent troops on the Finnish territory or, or which type of weapons could be there and, and so forth. It's too early to go to any of these details, actually. I'm sure that the parliament will also, uh, now based on this white paper, will discuss on, on, on different kind of options. But we also at the same time understand that uh, uh, there is not, uh, uh, you, you cannot be a little bit in the NATO. You are in NATO, you are not in NATO, and, and you of course have all the responsibilities and at the same time you have all the advantages when you are a member. Thank you. Next question, Juan Hogalan, Agencia EFE. Please. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Uh, if Finland decides to apply for membership, uh, do you expect uh, to get any kind of security guarantees from NATO or other members uh, countries like the United States for the transitional period? Uh, and then secondly, uh, would Finland apply for membership anyway without even uh, any kind of guarantee of this kind? Thank you. Thank you for these two questions. And first about, uh, we, we don't maybe use the expression security guarantees, which are uh, so clearly linked to NATO Article 5. And it's, it's very obvious that you get those security guarantees only when you are a NATO member, the Article 5 uh, guarantees. But of course, at the same time, we have been discussing with several NATO member states about the situation. And first of all, how to make if we apply membership, how to make the period as short as possible, if we describe it as this kind of gray period or gray zone, which is after the application, when you are, uh, before you are really a member of uh, NATO, it should be as short period as possible. And uh, as I have said, uh, many NATO member states to which I have been talking to understand that uh, uh, it cannot be so that the NATO open door policy is only theoretical. It has to be uh, existing in the real life, and then, of course, you, you, uh, you, you understand the concerns of the applicant countries in, in this kind of uh, moment as well. Uh, sorry, your second question was about... Uh, second. It, no. it was about uh, if uh, Finland would anyway apply for, for membership. Oh, okay, with without, any... without Sweden, you mean? No, without any, any kind of guarantee or uh, uh, okay, whatever uh, you want okay. to call it. Well, of course, this is uh, when when you go uh, go ahead, and if we go ahead in, in, in this process, first it's the NATO Council that is dealing with the issue, then NATO Council invites possible applicant to the negotiations and, and so forth, and then it goes to the member states. And of course, uh, uh, when, when whenever the decision is made by, by Finland, then we, of course, are ready to go ahead, but uh, of course uh, we at the same time do all these diplomatic consultations. We talk to the NATO countries, we meet several of them on the head of state level or, or uh, ministerial level, and, and uh, this is part of the process, of course, that we bilaterally consult uh, several NATO countries at the same time. More than that, uh, I cannot say. Thank you. Next question comes from Henry Foy, Financial Times. Please go ahead. Hi, um, forgive me for asking a second question. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about the elephant in the room, or the bear in the room, perhaps, which is Russia, of course. Um, have you had any interactions with Moscow in, in the last few weeks or months about this issue? Obviously, there's been some aggressive rhetoric from them. Um, but could you give us any kind of an idea of what that relationship is like at the moment? I know in the white paper you say you want to keep good relations with them regardless. How on earth would that work, and what kind of um, private warnings have they given you, aside from the very public uh, statements? Thank you. 
Well, first of all, it's, it's important to notice that we have more than 1,300 kilometer common border uh, with Russia and we, the border is peaceful uh, like it has been all these years. Our authorities uh, are in contact over the border, the border authorities and so forth. So we have that cooperation that is necessary during these times. Actually, the COVID time made a lot of restrictions of traveling and, and, and so forth. We, we still issue visas for, for those who are in need of, of coming to Finland from Russia and, and so forth. So despite of the sanctions, which we follow, of course, very, uh, very tightly in a tight manner, uh, we, we have this normal people to people cooperation uh, ongoing. We have families that are, are on the both sides of the border and, and, and so forth. This is a normal relationship with, with Russia. Then uh, secondly, the, to your question of the uh, Russian rhetoric or, or the expressions, of course, uh, if you look at the three uh, points that Russia has been in, in different statements been uh, taking up, first is that, that they have been stating uh, earlier that uh, possible NATO membership is, is up to Finland and Sweden to decide. If they so decide, that will have a, a, a military political consequences to which Russia has to respond. And of course, if, uh, if you have a NATO border uh, next to you, uh, I, I think it's like uh, Defense Minister uh, Kaikkonen expressed, you, you might then uh, change your own military planning and, 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 and so forth. It has uh, implications certainly, but this is our uh, understanding that the, the situation is, is at the moment. Uh, I think it's very important that Finland is making its own decisions. We have our sovereignty, and, and uh, it's important that that sovereignty is respected. Thank you. I think we have reached our last question and the answer uh, thereof. And it's time to close this uh, press conference. I thank everybody uh, for joining us. And you can find a recording of this event at the government homepage soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.